Hello, everybody, and welcome to Web Connect Plus series number two. Just waiting for everybody to join. Look forward to presenting our session today. If you can do me a favor <clears throat> as you're coming in, um, there's a little chat scenario. Just let me know where you're from. I'm coming in from um, lovely UK today, uh, but we've got some um, people from right around the world. So if you can stick in the chat, let me know where you're from. Um, that would be awesome. Hey, Linda from California. Nice to see you. We've got Mark in Canada. Brett in Utah. Nice. South Carolina. I'm sure we've got a few. Well, another Carolina. We've got some Belgium. Nice from Belgium. A couple from Belgium. LA. Wow. Really is a global session today, guys. We had somebody on from Rwanda earlier. Hey, Dan. Michael, Chris, nice to see you all. We'll just give it a couple of minutes and wait for a few guys to come in. We've got a <clears throat> really exciting session for you today. And um, we've got some great um, guys on the on the speaker slots and also um, for the Q&A panel um, a bit later on. So uh, I'm really pumped to be able to chat to you guys today. And I hope you're all having a great day. Um, it's been a crazy one here in the Infigo HQ. Um, four or five months into the quarter and things are going crazy. So, all right, Levoy uh, from Ohio. Yeah, we've got quite a few come here, Wisconsin as well. So I'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll get started, guys. Tyler, you got a fan base out there, buddy. <laughs> I see that. Hey, Joe. Is that wherever you go? They follow you. <laughs> You're not. Please tell me these are not paid paid groupies, Tyler. <laughs> That's a nice touch of the R, and I'm jealous. Charlie's Chris, why have, we got, why have we got some paid groupies? We like this one. All right, we've still got some guys coming in, so I'll just give it another one minute, and then we'll get cracking, guys. Another Canadian coming in from Ontario. <laughs> There's my groupie. Thanks, Linda. Hopefully see you very soon. Not sure if many of you guys will be going out to Label Connect and Label Expo, but we'll also, um, I think everybody in there will, will be heading out that way as well. So it'll be good to see everybody in person. So hang, hang by the stand if you're going to be out there in a um, couple of weeks as well. Looking forward to be able to show you some new stuff that we'll be working on. Right, I think we're about there now. <clears throat> so thank you very much today. Um, what I'd like to do is just give a quick intro of what we're going to be covering um, today. So if we can, um, basically we've got um, three great companies. So we're looking at a real focus around streamlining your processes um, for an improved client experience. Um, and really, we achieve this by um, customizing your workflow and integrating systems that are very common um, to be separated within um, that environment. Um, obviously, with everything that's going on in the world over the last um, 24 months, there really is um, pressure as a, a, a printer, as a packaging provider, um, to, to be able to um, add some better bottom line opportunity. And that really can come from integrated um, workflows. So what we want to be able to, to do is not just, hey, guys, go and buy these solutions, make sure they integrate, but it's really understanding how they integrate, what's the best of value, what's the best of products out there. And we've got some great um, guys. So we've got um, a chaps on for the significance, uh, myself and the team from Figo, and also Tilly. And we'll be talking about how those systems come together and why they add um, such value. And it's, it's quite an interesting thing here. So Web Connect Plus, what is it? Well, we started this around um, probably about three to six months. It was a discussion. We had some great ideas. Um, and we're talking about how can we add value to our client base? How can we help you guys um, deliver better res results within your business? And really, that was about coming together, putting our shared thoughts and ideas 
And that was where Web Connect um, really was born from. So I'm really excited to bring everybody to, together today. So <clears throat> the important thing is um, you've got a selection of people, so make sure you get familiar um, with the software. We're trying out some new software today, LiveStorm. It's a, a very good um, online app for being able to do webinars and things like that. So hopefully you find it easy to use and, and navigate um, today. So we've got today ourselves and Figo covering the web to print side that allows you to capture some orders and I'll be touching that um, a little bit more in, in, in a second. We've then also got our lovely friends um, from Significance that really are the glue in, in all of this sort of stuff and they're bringing that tech together. And some of the things we've got today, they're going to be showcasing, showcasing the um, very, very good and focus and um, workflow. And then last but definitely not least, we've got the lovely guys um, from Tilia um, who have got some awesome um, piece of technology that allows you to be able to automate the imposition of those jobs, which is directly integrated with both the Infigo system um, and, and, and the switch today. So a real great selection of things going on today. And it's going to be live and dangerous. We've got a few polls. Um, please ask your questions. We won't answer them straight away, but we will be using uh, running a Q&A panel at the end of the session. But please don't be afraid. We're here for you guys. We want to talk to you. We want to find out what your pain points are and when we see how we can really help and add value to your business today. So who have we got with us? Well, my lovely self, a few of you might know me. Um, I'm the crazy guy from the UK. Um, got a bit of a dodgy accent, formerly from Scotland, spent a little bit of time in Australia and a lot of time in the US, but I reside in the UK. So if my accent goes around the world, I do apologize. Um, it's a bit it's a bit mad. So I'm the CEO and founder um, of Infigo. We have um, Tyler from um, uh, Tilly Labs. He is a solutions director. So he anything in position, he absolutely rocks that world. And we've got a couple of guys that really make up the A-team to get to that today. We've got Sean, um, who's director of technology over significance, and James, who's uh, one of the business analysts. So those guys will be um, helping us um, demonstrate some technology today, but also running through some really cool stuff um, and answering your questions at the end um, from that point of view. So a great lineup to be um, to be um, to be with us today. There's nowhere else you should be right now. So <clears throat> nice to meet you all. So I'm the CEO of Planner and Figo. What does that mean? Well, I've been in this world about 25 years. I know by my boyish good looks, I can only be at least 25. But I, I hate to tell you, I'm actually pushing well over 40 now um, and spent all my life, started off as an electrical engineer, very process driven and, and starting my world in the digital print um, sector and I've been um, cutting my cloth um, ever since um, that piece is gone. So edit all things, web to print, e-commerce, APIs and integration is, is my bag and I'm really pleased to be able to um, speak with you guys today. <laughs> Thanks for that, Roland. <laughs> Hopefully we haven't got the same underwear. Um, so if you've got any questions today, you'll find the software. There's a little chat function. Um, so make sure that you can click on that and just fire that in um, and it'll be picked up. We've got some lovely um, guys who will be um, storing those questions in um, for later on um, in, in today's session. So for today, we'll try to put together a real, uh, real life scenario. So we've got Daniel. Daniel is from um, our lovely fictitious company. So he is Get Digital Inc., one of those famous digital uh, packaging companies. And he's got a few problems. Poor old Daniel. Um, and we're not talking about the unfortunate problems. He's got some problems on the workflow, on the workshop. So we need to be able to help him. So um, Get Digital, they're really a um, part of a large um, packaging printer. They're looking to expand. They're used to taking in big jobs that be able to sit in the factory for weeks and weeks, but they're being pushed by the client base to be able to take in lots of different jobs. They're looking to try and increase um, the sales and opportunity with this 
um, um, it, it, this new division, but they've got some um, they've got some challenges. Um, how do we be able to take in these jobs? There are MIS systems, the systems are used to be able to dealing with much larger volumes. So how can we help them take in some great orders, maintain profitability, increase automation, um, but able to maintain that professional outlook to their customers? They want to be able to deliver perfection, getting those orders to the customers quickly. They need to be able to take all of these large amount of small jobs and pull them into one seamless process, getting them out the door 24 hours, 24 seven, and pushing them out um, the job, making sure they really hit those due dates and things like that. So for, for the first part of our series, which makes sense, we're gonna start at the front of the system. So this is where Infigo really comes into play. So what is Infigo? So Infigo is a um, web to print system that really provides that front end to your workflow solution. There's no point in having automation if you can it, cannot get jobs into your system. So buyers these days are demanding online ordering. The whole world is pushing towards the internet. If you're not doing, if you don't have a way of being able to accept online orders, your business is not going to be around in many years to come. It's just the way of the future. That's not something that we are deciding. That is really the decision of the user, whether it be B2B or B2C. The buying pattern's changing. No longer are people sitting in the office nine to five and being able to ring up and say, can I have an order? Can I have a quote? Can I have that information? That is a 24 seven requirement that needs to be able to be met. We're seeing a huge increase in order online order volume. The customers are demanding creativity and innovation. You're getting um, new SKUs to market quicker, and you're going to take, be taking a plethora of jobs um, through that online web to print system. So we need to be able to take all of those orders at certain times of the day, batch them up and fire them through to production so we can deliver them back to the customer, meeting Daniel's requirements of getting them out perfectly on time in a great, great fashion. So we're going to um, run a little poll right now. Um, question, have you seen a demand for shorter runs over the last 12, 24 months? So if you'd just like to um, answer the poll, that's just about to pop up on the screen. And then hit submit your vote. So we'll just wait for those to come in. We've now got over half of people submitting them. Anybody that's answered no, probably best to leave the webinar now because we're not going to be able to help you. Only joking. No, this is, is here for everybody. So I'd be interested to know maybe if you've answered no, that you've not seen an increase um, in orders, small runs. I'd be interested to put what, 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 you, what trends you are noticing. Maybe fire it in the chat as we've seen. So we have today a whopping 82% of people that have seen a demand for shorter runs. 10% not sure, and we've got a whole three people, 8% um, who are actually not sure. So um, very interesting um, information there from, from our, and hopefully those that are seeing demands are, are, are going to be taking on some of the challenges that we're discussing um, today. So what I'd like to do, I'm just going to share my screen before we fire over to the next guys. And I'm just going to run you through um, an order going through the Infigo system. So hopefully everybody can see um, my screen nice and clearly. So we have our lovely um, portal that we've um, put together today. This is part of um, a, a number of jobs that we're, we're setting up um, for the Web Connect Plus. We're welcome to find this out if you'd like to have a play after there. So we're going to take this mailer product. So this is a great example. You've got multiple products coming in. How can I be able to submit these jobs? On this particular one, we're looking at a personalized job to be able to push that through. But we could be looking at um, files being uploaded that require instant pre-flight, we could be looking at variable data coming in, creating multiple 
packages. We've got a lot of systems here. So we're now looking at the Infigo system. We're now into Mega Edit. And I'm going to be able to just very simply um, personalize this job and, and fire this out. And you'll notice straight away I've got some warnings. I've got the systems flagged up through the pre flight system, which we, we actually use the InFocus system for this, letting me know that some errors in that job. So I can get that right at this point before I actually submit my artwork. But I know of that because I'm um, true blue to Peter fashion for the UK guys. Um, I can find out what's going on and if I want to, I can be able to resolve those. I'm just gonna click pro, um, close on that. And now what I'd like to do is I've now got a, a, a flat file. I want to be able to see what this job will actually look like in 3D, 3D real time. So I've been clicking on preview. I'm now gonna render a full example of that job. I can see what's going on. And the beauty of this is, this is one example of a layout of a 3D, but we could have um, 3D motion going on. We've got lots of different ways of being able to, 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 to display that. And the question here always is, why do I need to bother doing it in 3D? Well, this gives you a real-time preview of what is going on with your file. So in particular for, 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 the, um, for this carton, um, if I want to see what the fold's like, if I want to see what's going on, then I can real time see exactly how it's going to do. I can see how it, how it sits and all of that sort of stuff. So I get the exact look of what is going to be outputted um, when I print this job. If I'm happy, I simply add it to my basket. And once the, again, just prompted for these warnings, which for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to skip and I'll straight into my basket. No different than any other system, really simple to use, really clean and, and, and a simple design. I can either edit my design, I can go back and add multiple of these, but for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to fire this straight through. I can see all my information here, my delivery options. I can pick from previous used delivery addresses. We can integrate directly into Easy Post for creating a manifest file that for Daniel and get these orders out on time in a perfect fashion. Um, I'm now going to com confirm my order and that order will fly through the system in lightning speed. One of the quickest ways of getting the job into the system and it's now going to land on our friends on the other side of the globe. The good news is we're not literally sending by pigeon. This is actually going through the internet. So it's much quicker. So we've got an order reference here of 7370. So my customer can take that and use that as a reference at any point um, within that within my system. They can return to the home page and they can get cracking on other pieces of job for their day. And at any point, they can simply click their account status and they can see where their orders are as the update through the other parts of the system. Really simple, really fast and absolutely easy to buy for your customers to use. So I'm now going to fire over to guys um, at Significance where they will take you through the next part of the journey. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Douglas. That was awesome. So we've seen the front end of how we're getting things in, and we're going to go through the rest of it. I'm just going to introduce myself, James Robinson. I'm a business analyst here at Significance. Um, my history is in uh, workflow software and uh, label and packaging production. Um, and I've got my buddy here, Sean Davis, who's our uh, CTO, and he's going to be driving the uh, the switch side of things for you. So switch is our, our go-to workflow um, with this particular product. Um, we're going to look at how we can get information from Infigo and send that on down the line to get imposed uh, by Tyler and the, the group over at Tilia. So Sean, if you want to go ahead and uh, take over and show us some of these inputs. So we can use inputs such as webhooks, um, pulling in XML data, receiving webhooks from Infigo. Uh, we can interact directly with um, databases. Uh, we can receive files through FTPs. Or we can make direct API calls to any API we need to. And then we've also got the ability to execute scripts and commands. We can go send things straight to Illustrator make Illustrator files if needs be. And then uh, we can also receive things through uh, SMTP through uh, email if we want to. 
So Sean's going to show us uh, some of the stuff coming in from our XMLs from FICO. So we're at the way we created that uh, job, and here's all of our data coming over from Infico. We have our order status, we have our payments, we have all of the shipping data. There's our customer information, our order notes, billing address, shipping address, all of these data points that we can ultimately use in our workflow. So we can drive things to our, our mailers, we can drive things into Tilia based on uh, the data that we get from Infigo. So we're going to go ahead and look at um, the data that we got coming over. So here's our PDF coming in. We're going to link that up with the metadata that came in from Infigo as well. And there we go. So we've got our job created. In this particular case, we're showing the making of a die. Um, we can also automatically produce a die if one wasn't actually built into the file. So in this case, we're showing the ability of switch to go ahead and use the pit stop tasks to throw a die line on here based on the type of product that we're actually using. And then we're going to go ahead and pre-flight that job. So no differently than what you saw with Douglas showing off some of the warnings that showed up in Infigo, we can also flag them inside of Pit Stop to give you actually annotated reports based on the pre-flight that's coming out of um, Pit Stop inside of Switch. And then we can send a notification to somebody if there's a oh, error or a warning that needs to be addressed by a human being. And here's your email that was sent out. We had two critical errors. And we can have a look at the actual pre-flight report, and that will give us a little bit more uh, detailed information on what we actually got out of that pre-flight. There we go. Those are our critical failures, our RGBs, low-resolution files, and then we can also do um, automatically fix some issues. And our colleagues over at ESCO will recognize a lot of this stuff. Our page boxes are outlined. We get our layer information. So everything you could ever possibly want to know about that file is all outlined in the annotated report. All right, so down here, what we're showing is the variable data portion of the workflow. So in this particular case, what we've gone and done is um, just to show off the variable data side of things, uh, we've made two different versions of the PDF coming in. So we're using the PDF as our template, and then we're making an individualized version for myself and one for Sean. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our names on the bottom of them. So this shows you how ultimately you could concatenate some variable data into Infigo and then individualize each one of these uh, mailer boxes. So get a nice little personalization. And then once we've got the individualization done, we've got our files. So we're gonna take all of our data that we collected um, from Infigo and we're going to drop that into um, a workflow to do the imposition. So what we're showing here is the actual um, switch portal. So for situations where you want to have a little bit more interaction, you can actually use the switch portal to gather up those files and use them as, um, in this case, kind of like a webhook or a hot folder. And we're going to take those individual files that we've created through switch and we're going to drop them into the Phoenix imposition workflow through the switch portal. I would give it a customer name and how many of them we need. Pick our stock and submit it to our uh, Phoenix workflow. So there's all of our data that's going to get dumped down through the metadata through switch. And we have our imposition workflow here that's going to take the XML data, combine them all, assemble everything onto a sheet, and submit that into Phoenix. Now, I know there was one other thing that um, 
Sean was interested in highlighting when it comes to Switch being very open source and very um, user friendly. There's there's actually the app store that we can actually use inside of Switch as well. So some of the things that aren't necessarily built in can be um, plugged in um, through the Infocus app store. So for things like optimizing PDFs or if we're using CSV files, there's lots of little bits and pieces that you can go and pick up um, through the app store, kind of similar to your Apple app store to fill in some of those gaps. And we use a lot of these on a regular basis um, you know, for processing data and splitting things out. And we're actually working on some of our own apps that you'll see showing up on the App Store very shortly. Hopefully I covered that okay for you, Sean. <laughs> so if we want to jump back over to that imposition. There we go. So after we drop that through, we can see our preview of our nice imposition that's going to uh, make its way on over to our friend Tyler and Tilly. Awesome. Thanks very much, James. <clears throat> it's a great way to be able to see how that comes together. And having we've got a vast amount of customers that are using across the globe such great workflows in um, in the in the switch. Is there anything it can't do, James? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you coffee what, if you what want is to. It, what is the hardest thing you haven't been able to do? Come on, there must have been something. You know, actually, I, I, I haven't actually run across something that somebody's asked us for that we haven't been able to do. And, and actually, I have people said have said to me, can it get me coffee? And the answer actually is yes, because we have <laughs> we have robotics partners at this point that we can drop information to the robot and have it bring you coffee. If you really well, I think, I think the good news there, James, we've just got the that's the we've now got the, the seeding of the next um, webinar right there. Exactly. How yeah. we can have help Starbucks be more automated, yeah. mate. Maybe that could be part of the next next one. Sounds good. To I'll, me. Let, I'll let I you like just it. cover quickly a little bit um, about yeah uh, about uh, significance. Yeah, we're at our we are core at our core integrators. Um, you know, obviously we're we're showing off switch here, but uh, we're we're perfectly happy to play nicely with with everybody in the workflow space, and we very much do. Um, it's nice to see a lot of my former ESCO colleagues in the in the room here. It's good to see everybody again. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right. All right Thank Tyler. you very much, Dave. And Sean, nice. we'll now head over to the lovely Tyler. Oh, quickly, I better, better not forget, I'll get a kick. Um, oh, so yeah. Oh. Uh, we've got another poll coming up. Do you have the right elements to adopt um, an automated, not just a web to print, an automated web to print setup? Um, within your business today. So um, the poll will pop up and then once you've hit your vote, just click submit. That'll be um, awesome. A few guys just joining us as well. Quite a few SOSs here. Good news, guys. <laughs> and it's exciting to see how many people are also working on this as well, because it's such a key component. Where we were talking about earlier, and <clears throat> I'm sure you find this, Tyler and, and James, where we're seeing customers these days is this is a real value where you can add some, some bottom line efficiency to the business and, and eke out that profit when all other parts of the business are are being squeezed with with board going up with areas going up so i think automation is often overlooked people say well i, I push it to a hot folder or i get that data but automation is much bigger that um and thinking about not just the complexities of taking a job say from and fee go into and focus but maybe pushing information into your accounting system we've got lovely and uh, linda on from print iq and where you can put it into MIS systems and things like that as well. You've got, it's much bigger um, than just that. I don't know what your thoughts are there, James, Tyler. Every day, um, you know, that is that is very much the core of what we're doing on a daily basis at Significance is um, moving that data around, all right? Um, lots of people have, you know, 
different disparate systems and you know information coming into one place and then it's not flowing to another and re-entering data um, which really isn't necessary you know we have the tools to be able to do this um, we can get that data from all of those disparate systems and, and put it in the places that it needs to be when it needs to be there yeah fantastic thanks Sergio. Um, so <clears throat> really we've got a 40 percent of the gang are, are ready to go live which is fantastic um, we've got around 24 percent um well actually uh, we take that back we're around uh, 50 odd percent that really just don't have a clue and then we've got a couple of guys that are just too busy to get started well that's madness because we've got the guys from significance here and they'll take away that pressure to be able to getting this stuff to market because the sooner you do this the sooner you're adding cash back into your pocket as it, it, there's no other way that every piece of your business that you can help automate within reason and sensibility is going to add bottom line cash back into your wallet to go and buy that next super yacht that linda would love a ride on um yeah. from that perspective so i'm going to have help, help our friend daniel <laughs> Uh, Tyler from Tilly Lab. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Douglas. And then, um, can you hear me? So I'm, I'm not muted, right? Okay, perfect. No, loud again. Yeah, I wanted to touch on. Um, yeah, Greg. Greg made an interesting comment uh, in the chat there. I don't know if James, you, you've got some uh, insight there, but yeah, Greg. Greg's asking a, a question that is a, a, a really common question. We, we hear this all the time. Um, and I would advise you, Greg, to, uh, I, I don't, I didn't see Linda actually on the, on the session today, but Linda from, from print IQ. Um, and there, there's, there's a couple other, uh, ERP MIS systems, um, that are tackling this, this challenge of, of ganging, you know, multiple orders or multiple customers on, on a sheet or on a run, and then downstream, um, you know, uh, divvying up the cost, right? By looking at things like the, the percentage of uh, the sheet that was used by by customer A versus customer B, and then divvying up the cost and allocating costs accordingly on the back end. Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to talk about that today, but we will talk about comboing and ganging your jobs. Uh, for, for multiple clients, but yeah, James, I don't know. Did you, did you have anything to add on that? Um, absolutely. It's possible. I mean, obviously we have all of the data coming in, um, about what job we're actually producing. Um, and then from the, the Tilia side, we, we certainly have all of the percentages of all of those things. So gathering all of that information up and, um, conveying that back, whether it's through something like parent IQ is certainly very, very doable. Um, and then, you know, if you want to go to the extreme of, of actually looking at um, the print runs themselves, there are certainly ways of going about um, actually looking at the data coming from the actual equipment or uh, measuring those things actually. Coverage, the, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So I will, yeah, jump in just, I guess, by way of introduction. Um, Tyler Thompson, I'm the solutions director here at, at Tilio Labs. So there we go. Uh, just to kind of bring it back um, to where we where we started, Douglas gave a really good introduction to the problem, introduced us to, to Daniel. Daniel is uh, yeah, an employee at a, at a printer converter who's trying to tackle and streamline you know, these short or micro runs. And to do that, they, uh, Daniel, invested in Infigo, a web to print storefront. Uh, so we saw that whole whole process uh, with Douglas, just kind of showing us and walking us through um, how Daniel's customer can jump online, quickly order a package, customize the package. Then we saw that order, you know, move into and focus switch. So switch um, went and, and gathered all of the information about the order, the material, the quantity that was ordered, uh, took a look and, and did some pre-flighting on the graphics, and then ultimately pushed that uh, information down to, to Tilia Labs. So um, our product, Phoenix, uh, has a direct integration with uh, Infigo and, and Switch. So you kind of saw that um, in James's demo. 
where uh, order data came from Figo through switch and then uh, an imposition file uh, just magically appeared uh, out of switch. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into that just to put some context behind uh, what, what's happening in the background and just talk a little bit about uh, our tech and what we're doing at, at Tilia Labs. That's quite a bit different than you know a traditional imposition tool. So yeah, just at a at a high level, um, Tilia Labs and in, in what we're doing is we are importing the order data from Infigo, going and dynamically calculating the gang runs, and then uh, automating the generation of those imposition files to, to be sent to press, and then the cut files to be sent to uh, either the the die cutter, the guillotine cutter, or um, a digital CAD cutting table or, or laser cutting table. So the challenge, if, if we again take a little bit of a, a step back, um, and Daniel, uh, you know, has recently invested and um, pretty well automated the uh, ability to, you know, go and capture these these micro or short runs by uh, leveraging a, a web to print storefront. And then Daniel was also able to facilitate and automate the um, pre-flighting and, and data collection with, with Switch. But typically what, what we're finding uh, is a big challenge is then, you know, uh, how does Daniel take those orders and um, not have to touch every single order before it goes to press? So. This is where we step in. Um, and with Phoenix, you know, in, instead of having to take each of these orders one at a time and look at their quantities and, and go and do some manual impositioning, uh, either at press or, or in an impositioning software, uh, we uh, attack this problem quite a bit differently. So with our imposition AI technology, um, we're able to quickly derive the most cost effective way of uh, taking your orders in and looking at your different presses, both printing and finishing equipment, uh, as well as your different stocks and stock sizes. And based on cost, go and dynamically figure out the, the most cost-effective way to, to gang and batch those orders together to create the most efficient you know, printing and, and cutting run. So the way that we do that is we first model or uh, simulate your production environment inside of Phoenix, inside of our software. So you'll go and fill out a, a couple uh, pieces of, of uh, data about your printing equipment and your cutting equipment. So you're going to set some things like the constraints of, of the, the printing equipment, be it digital or, or conventional. So you're going to have things like min and max sheet sizes. If it's a roll fed machine, uh, you're going to have a, a, a min and max uh, roll width that you can run. Um, and then you're going to have some cost variables. So uh, set up cost, the make ready cost, uh, the, the speed of the press, what's the running rate or the cost per hour to run that press. So once you've modeled your printing equipment and your finishing equipment, um, you'll also do the same thing for your stock. So you'll make Phoenix or, or the software aware of, of the different sheet sizes that you uh, either have in inventory or that you purchase from your vendor. Um, and then you make the software aware of the cost of those uh, either sheet sizes or roll widths. And then Phoenix is going to use that data um, to then go and heuristically look at the different combinations of, of printing, finishing, uh, and, and sheet sizes to try and fulfill the, the orders that are presented to the software. So this significantly you know, reduces the time uh, in, in positioning to you know, really scale a business uh, and, and to tackle and manage these, these micro or short runs, specifically web to print um, you know, short runs that are typically ordered at, at really small quantities. So um, yeah, this this is this is typically a you know a, a problem that we see in, in digital. Uh, either customers or, or the industry starts investing in, in digital printing equipment, and then the problem becomes okay, how do we you know sell to this digital printing equipment? Um, of course, we can tackle that with web to print. Then how do we feed the beast, right? So uh, we don't want to again touch every single one of these small runs, but rather you know let it, let software let an algorithm try and solve this problem for you. So uh, if we take a look at this uh, specifically for digital uh, cartons and, and corrugated, um, with our software, customers are 
able to simply import a list of orders. So I just drag the, a CSV file or an Excel document. Our software will go and, and find those graphic files uh, and the dies, attach the order quantities uh, to each of those parts from the order. And then you simply select your, your device. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna run it on a page wide and a zoomed for cutting. And then Phoenix is gonna go through and look at different ways of, of uh, packing the sheet. While uh, it's packing the sheet, it's sending this geometry data down to the Zoom, the cutting table. Um, and then immediately we're getting feedback on exactly how many boards is this gonna take? How long is it gonna take in, in printing? And how long is it gonna take in, in cutting? Um, so yeah, Phoenix allows uh, customers to, to gang orders, of course, by substrate. Um, and then you have, you know, really an infinite number of, of other properties that you can group uh, orders together or keep orders separated. Um, so things that are, are common are, are priorities or due dates. Uh, I want to take a big batch of orders and make sure that all my orders that are due within the next two days get grouped together first. Um, or a lot of customers, uh, and, and going back to Greg's question of, uh, yeah, ganging a bunch of customers together um, with this software, uh, you can actually avoid that, right? So you could say um, in Phoenix, you can add a rule to say, I've got a big bucket of orders for, for today, gang all these and, and optimize my, my material. Uh, however, I wanna make sure that only orders that have the same customer are grouped together, right? So you can get pretty crazy with these rules um, and, and really extend the algorithm to kind of achieve you know, the, the imposition or, or the result that you want to send down to press. Um, yeah, so yeah, Greg, what, one, one answer to your question is, well, you don't have to you know, uh, group everything together uh, from different customers, right? You can use Phoenix and intelligently keep customers separated while still packing the sheet. Um, so yeah, a number of, of uh, really interesting use cases for, for Phoenix and, and dynamic and positioning. So if we actually take a look at, at uh, what Douglas uh, had ordered uh, through Infigo, um, I've got that order uh, artwork file here. So I'm just gonna simply drag this in. This is a more uh, manual way of using uh, Tilia Phoenix. Drag this order in. You can see uh, where the software is gonna go detect the die shape based on uh, the die that came from Infigo. We've got the artwork in here from the, from the web to print store. We can go and manipulate things like our bleed. And then we're setting our, our substrate and you can go punch in the, the quantity that you need. So in my case, uh, 250 from the, from the uh, web order. And then I simply go into Imposition AI, uh, say I want these things to nest, pick my printer and my cutter. And uh, this I'm going on a Nozomi, got a couple different sheet sizes that I want Phoenix to evaluate. And then a couple seconds later, Phoenix will generate the most cost effective way of, of packing. In this case, this is just one order, so it's pretty simple. But you can see we're also getting feedback on, on the cutting time. So it's gonna take us uh, 18 boards uh, in about one hour or so to cut these, um, these orders out. And then Phoenix, of course, fully imposes the file. So it creates your print file with your registration dots and your Zoom marks, um, and then also creates your, uh, your print file and your cut file. All right, I'll pass it back over to you, Douglas. Awesome, thanks, Tyler. I tell you what, I never, I could sit and, I could sit and watch that all day. That was absolutely brilliant. I hope, I hope you guys have really enjoyed Tyler's um, explanation there. You make it seamless. Is it that easy to set up, Tyler? It's that easy. It is, it is actually very simple. That's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I think <clears throat> it's not just about, it, it, in position is it it's really about that intelligent in position because anybody can put a sheet uh, <clears throat> a job on the sheet but it's actually understanding the presses it's going on the board is going on and some other complexities in there the workflow work. and that's really where by joining all these partners together you, you're really getting that that real powerful benefit awesome so we've got <clears throat> um just before we hit into um, our Q&A, we've got um, another poll. So how do you currently handle imposition? So if I don't see at least 100% um, Tilia Labs, we're going to be, Tyler's going to be disappointed here. So but let, let, let us know. So have you got completely, completely manual effort, um, small proportions automated, some of the process is automated, or actually you guys are, are, are flying in um, off on a rocket. So if you can just submit your vote, that will be um, great. 
select your option. I think we got the previous poll. No, I think it's come up okay, James. Is it? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Oh, okay, there we go. Eyes and prize. Because I didn't I didn't vote on the last one. So. Oh <laughs> so always use yeah. arrow, James. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Remember a forward software. Yeah, Just joking, go. guys. Don't everybody leave the <laughs> Don't everybody leave the, the webinar. No, <laughs> so yeah, we've got coming in. So <clears throat> it's really interesting to see we've, we've got, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done here um, to, to, to really, so some of the process automated 35%, fully automated um, is less than 70%. So as we can see, as a way in the business to be able to help and drive back um, a better experience if we if we, t if we pick out a couple of points there from um daniel he was really looking to um be able to um improve that process be able to suck in those jobs and if we're we're not automating we're not we're not really going to be answering daniel's um queries on that um that piece so we're going to be um going to a q a session we've got a few questions that have been answered um, through through the day. So if you just have a quick look on screen, you can just hit the little chat, fire in your question, and we'll share that out to our lovely um, panel for, for, for answering. No question is a bad question unless it's about my underwear. Um, <laughs> so we've got myself, Tyler, James, and also Sean, who's doing lots of driving in the background, brains of the operation, really. But we don't tell them that too often um make, making sure it all hangs together and and, and drives in the, the, the background roland really really wants to know if we're getting rid of icon now <laughs> part of uh, uh, i see yeah. that i don't i don't know uh roland that uh i could answer that question um i, would I know that uh <clears throat> Yeah, I, I know that. Uh, well, of course, the um, acquisition of Tilia Labs is is still extremely new. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, still extremely new. So I, I know there's a, a lot of conversations, of course, happening internally um, to figure out roadmaps. <laughs> Keep the, keep the questions clean, unless it's my other one. Come on. Um, so well, just before we want to um, go on, uh, Chris, I don't know if you can just forward one of the slides for me a sec. I just want a quick summary. Um, no, we haven't got it there. Don't worry, buddy. In fact, let me just, uh, what I want to do, just quickly. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to... Uh, Share my screen a second. Just want to do a very quick summary of, and then we'll hit straight into the Q and A. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed what you've seen today. Um, before we um, fire fire off into the Q and A. So <clears throat> the summary, basically, what we're, we're looking for is <clears throat> for, for Daniel's requirements, he's looking to increase sales by opening a div division. So what we're saying is looking at a web front end to be able to do that, um, supply the customers with an easy online ordering um, portal, um, maintain low costs. So although Daniel wants to be able to submit orders, he doesn't want to fire in a load of people. So by utilizing and focus switch and all the, 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 the massive options you have available there, he's able to pull that um, job there. He's, he's able to maintain a great user interface with his customers, making sure integration with the, the Tilia system and the unfocus suite is making sure that the, jo the jobs are done fast, efficiently on the correct press and out the, do out the door. And he's really creating that efficiency um by bringing that job together delivering a perfect product and shipping it out on the due date that 
um, that is demanded. And a lot of people will say, we've now put all of Daniel's things in absolute green, and he's a very, very happy, um, very, very happy. Go back to his boss and now tell him he wants a raise because he's created all of these um, things from that point of view. So absolutely fantastic. Super. So over to the Q&A, guys. So we've got um, a couple of questions um, that we've covered off here. So I'll just run it over. I think we've covered Greg's one and Tyler um, and also Laurent's fired in there that, that there are some tools within and focus that we'll be able to um, fire that off there. Um, does the software dynamically schedule um, into a particular presses? I don't know that's maybe one for you, James, or, or, or Tyler. You got some thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so scheduling, uh, what Phoenix will do is evaluate um, the costs. So uh, it will look at running um, in a number of, of different uh, bulk printing and, and cutting routes. So Phoenix will look at uh, potentially running or printing digital and then cutting conventionally. So like on a, on a uh, Bob die cutter um, versus say, you know, printing digitally and, and cutting it on a, on a Zoom table uh, versus printing it conventionally and, and running it on a Zoom table versus printing it conventionally and running it on uh, a, a die cutter. So it will, Phoenix will evaluate the cost of those, you know, different um, routes and the permutations in, in, in between those routes. Uh, but it's not a, um, like a, a scheduler. Per se. It's not a scheduler or a load balancer. No. Um, but you could certainly use the data that came from that system to drive something that actually did. So it's something the like, system. Yeah. yeah, then you'd be, you know, talking to somebody like Print IQ and say, take that data, give it to the scheduling system and, and let it line it up based on the number of hours that is involved in the digital cut side of things. So absolutely you could from that perspective. Fantastic. Thanks, gents. So um, and then on to Dan. Hey, Dan, how are you doing? Looking forward to seeing you soon in Chicago. Um, so is the material? Yes, we do include that information over to both um, and focus and um Tilia, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the next <laughs> couple of things. Yeah, so Stephen actually had a very good question about automation. Um, you yeah, know, so looking far, at what the know, obstacles the are. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some of the things that we run into are, are standardization, um, where manual processes are driven by human beings, depending on who it is and what the day is. Um, people can tend to do things however is most efficient for them at any given moment. So getting everybody on the same page can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. Um, you know, a good example of that is say a two sided job where you have a structure that's built for front and back, but maybe, you know, some of your operators, rather than using the structural data, they just take that one up file and rotate it 180 degrees because it's symmetrical and it doesn't matter. Now you try and feed that into an automated solution that is looking for information that is driving the front and the back of something, and it gets very confused because now it doesn't know which part is supposed to go with which. So standardization, you can't automate without standardization. Um, the two kind of go hand in hand. And then the other thing that I see a lot is just um, the, the mental pushback of human beings, right? When you start talking about automating a process, it's immediately, I'm going to lose my job. Um, and, and it's yeah, scary for that me. Is um, and what we tell people all the time is it's not about taking jobs away. It's about doing more with what you have. Um, so the ability to actually get more work out the door with the same resources that you currently have. I don't need people to take information that was already in an MIS system and put it on a proof sheet or put it into Atelier Labs uh, Phoenix to, to do the imposition right? Um, I already have that information. So let me go get it from the ERP or the MIS or in Figo and convey that information through the system so that a human being doesn't have to do it anymore, right? So now I can take that human being and I can say, okay, we've got this really complicated Photoshop job or Photoshop image yeah, that needs to be processed. Deal yeah, with that because <laughs> I can't make a, I haven't, we don't quite have an automation or an AI to be able to deal with those, those problems. I still need people for that. 
So yeah, yeah those are some of the things uh, we have to. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks, James. So we've got a couple of other questions, guys. Um, so we've got um, so a question here. How, how do these guys get started? James, time of significance. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I want to, I've got some cash. I'm ready to go. Daniel <laughs> wants to spend a bit more money. How, how do we get him started? What's, what's the next steps? Yeah, we usually start with an assessment. Um, we get mm -hmm. in, uh, get me, the business analyst, in front of um, your core group of people um, and have some conversations around what your process currently looks like and what it could look like with an automated solution. So that usually means mapping out the way things come into your business right now and then looking at how we want them to come in in a digital world, in an automated world. Yeah, because definitely uh, some of the things that I find as well, and I'm sure James Siler and, and, and Sean, the, the guys, that, so when we, we talk about automation, it's is different things to different people. And I try yes. to take myself away from potentially the person I'm speaking to and, and have a bit more of a, an overarching business requirement of not just now as well, because everybody is, well, this is what we used to do. We just automate it. And it's like, well, if we want to do that, then there's no real point. What we want to think about is where do you want to get to? Where's the business heading? um and, and and from that 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 solution and and, and that's is such a important piece is to make sure that you take that that take that breather because not all not always are the the the, the, the initial requirements the, the where it's going to be heading from, from from that point of view so some great points there james um and, th and thanks for that so i've got <clears throat> one over for, for, for tyler here um how do you link in like your production equipment here what happens just bought a fancy new shiny. I'm not sure who's on the HP Xerox <laughs> Dust. What the kit would bought? How do how do I link it in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we've we've got some really interesting uh, integrations, IoT integrations that we we've done with uh, Zoom, for example, uh, and we continue to to build out our IoT integrations with other hardware manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Um, so keep an eye out for that because we've got some pr pretty exciting news uh, right around the corner with some other, um, yeah, digital uh, devices. I'll, I guess I'll say in in the industry. Um, so we're yeah we're, we we continue to make that process easier by trying to work with with hardware vendors uh, in the industry and you know being able to to communicate with them through through our API, but. Um, yeah, in general, like it's it's not it's not overly challenging to you know model most equipment inside of Phoenix, whether it's a printing uh, device or, or a, a finishing device. Mm -hmm. um, you fill out a, a handful of variables about the the machine, and we, we kind of we have a wizard that walks you through it. Um, yeah. So adding There's the machine tools out there today that you can actually, if the machine isn't fully automated, that you can connect into that. To, to metric i think is it metrics or uh, not metrics the, the there's a third party does all some of the connecting and i'm sure the mark would probably a bit more a fame with that but if it hasn't got an api there's ways of getting um that 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 that, that motion yeah. analysis thanks mark motion analysis. um yeah. <laughs> that information so you, you're not sort of left if there's a machine that isn't supported um exactly yeah Super. Sure. Um, <clears throat> couple of um, questions then. So how do the companies work together? This is a great question because often um, where you've got these different partnerships is like, well, am I going to be left on my own? What happens if Doug breaks in focus and <laughs> Tilia starts working? Who am I going to call? Uh, Ghostbusters are on vacation. Um, I need to be able to get some advice. So ultimately it's a partnership you guys can pick up anybody listed on this partnership if you've got a problem you pick up the phone and we'll know within the business to be able to um be able to help you with that the guys at significance are as i said the glue here so they would be a great port first column and we're sitting on the on the back phone ready to, with myself tyler and um, to be able to answer the support teams be able to answer these questions and narrow it down what won't happen is uh, them and our scenario so um we'll all put our hands around each other get them a quick cuddle and, and get on with solving the problems because it is software, it does go wrong, but you've got the best people working very collaboratively together to get you guys up and running, maintain that up and running status um, as a, a non the most continuous form. So um, great question um, there. 
um, from, from that point of view. So I think we're just about to um, close off. I, I'd just like to thank everybody um, for, their, for their time. Thank you um, to Tyler, James and Sean. Thanks, Significance. Thanks to the, the, um, Tilia and all the team behind us to put uh, uh, on this Web Connect. And thanks, everybody. We've had some great feedback. Just a few things in there from Dustin at the end. Thanks, Dustin, for joining us. Um, hope you enjoyed the session today. Um, and we're going to be um, keeping an eye out. And we've got another um, session not too far behind this, which we announced in the, in the up and coming weeks. So keep an eye out. We, we will be various people. We're going to be at a few of the shows. Um, Label Expo, we've got um, Printing United. So um, it will be great to see. Come and say hi. Um, we're not we're not animals. We don't we don't mind. Um, not all of us. Uh, that's just for Linda. Um, and um, if you're about at the bar, which is normally where you'll find me, um, we've got a, a, we'll make sure that we can buy some beers. But thank you very much for your time. I really do hope it's been useful. I've loved talking with you guys um, and so have the team. So take care, and I look forward to seeing you very very soon. Thanks and goodbye. Yeah. Thanks so much, Douglas. Take care. Cheers, guys. It's awesome.